Muere Marlita. Hello, welcome. Good afternoon from Ghana. Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to the orientation for the COVID-19 for Healthcare Workers course. Um, we'll just wait for some few minutes uh, for some few people to join. Looks like the numbers are going up. Afterwards, we'll have the welcome and introduction by the Africa Health President. So let's give it about two minutes and allow people to join. And afterwards, the president will then give the welcome address. All right. Um, I think we can we, we can start as we still wait for others to join, so we don't we do not waste much time. So um, I would like to uh, welcome the Afri House uh, President, um, Professor Elsie Iguli Mawade, to give us a welcome and a welcome address, and then we can take over from there. So over to you, Professor Elsie. Okay. Thank you very much. You are welcome, everyone, for this orientation program. Thank you so much for, for joining. Uh, I'll let uh, Georgina tell you more about AfriHealth, but I would like to give a special welcome to our uh, colleague from uh, Stanford University, Ati Powell. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. At AfriHealth, we value partnerships. So we are very happy to be collaborating with the Stanford University. So, and uh, this is not, we are not only uh, collaborating in this area, we have other collaborations through even other partnerships. So uh, we value Stanford University collaboration. Uh, this is a very important uh, program because Although it's on COVID-19, it is something that can be, the course can be used, even the information from the course can be used for other respiratory conditions as well. So it's, a, it's really an important program. And it also is important for AfriHealth because then it brings in many people from uh, different professions. So we value interprofessional um, education and collaborative practice, and this is also one of the courses that uh, uh, can be taken by people from different uh, professions. So thank you very much, Stanford University, for collaborating with us. I welcome all the people from the AfriHealth community. Thank you for joining, and uh, I wish you a fruitful um, uh, orientation program. Over to you, Georgina. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elsie, for welcoming us. And um, Roger, can you please uh, allow me to share my slides? I'll go through. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, whilst you are sharing, I, I would like to um, announce that they can put in their names and institution in the chat box whilst the presentation is going on. All right.
I would like to show my face uh, briefly um, because I, and I'm using my phone to show my face uh, briefly. So if you see my face there, uh, that is uh, <laughs> all right. So briefly to let you know about AfriHealth, uh, the organization that is working together with Stanford University, uh, the health center to run uh, this uh, program. AfriHealth, uh, our full name is African Forum for Research and Education in Health. We are located, that's our secretariat is located in Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. And uh, we were established in 2016 uh, as a, a body that brings together health professionals from different backgrounds in the areas of health professions, education, research, and service. And uh, what we advocate for or work towards is bringing all of us to work together in an interprofessional way so that we can give the best of healthcare to the people in Africa. We came out of um, a previous uh, project, which is called the Medical Education Partnership Initiative and another one, the Nursing Partnership Initiative. These two projects really impacted the continent and at the end, the PIs or the, the principal investigators decided to work together and bring more health professionals on board so that we can continue to chart a better course for the continent. And so we have uh, about 700 individual members and 70 institutions across uh, the continent of Africa. So for, this is a, how you see AfriHealth, our membership, across the continent and institutions. And we have a governance body, so which means that we are legally a legally set up organization. And our vision is to pursue excellence in health, research, education, and service provision. And uh, our mission is to provide African leadership for responsive health professions, education, training, research, and service delivery. And we work, uh, we want to achieve that through partnerships, networking, advocacy, and then serving as a platform also to share knowledge and also build capacity among others. We have four goals, and our goals are to really establish ourselves so that we'll be able to provide what we set up for ourselves that is a better Africa in terms of health and also serve as a platform for knowledge generation sharing and best practice for others. And then also, we're also looking at the quantity and quality of health professionals on the continent. And that is also very important to us. So we look at how we can transform the production of health professionals. Mm -hmm. on the continent. And then also, uh, research, we also uh, have the goal of contributing to research. Uh, please, uh, some people uh, are not muted. So please, and when you come in, mute so that uh, we can hear what is being presented. The activities AfriHealth is involved in our research, capacity building, interprofessional student exchange, webinars, annual symposium, and then we also have communities of practice, which we call the technical working group. And they are 10, and uh, because of time, I cannot go through all. AfriHealth is also involved in projects uh, that uh, we do. Uh, we are funded by the National Institute of Health, that is supporting us to be able to really be the organization that we ought to be uh, and make an impact on the continent, supporting us in the research work uh, that uh, we are involved in. We also have a program which seeks to build capacities of 
health professionals, both in service and then pre service, for them to be able to deliver high quality HIV team based care to the population. And they are currently also involved in a project uh, that seeks to build capacity in antimicrobial stewardship in a One Health concept. They're also involved in an implementation research with Africa CDC, where we are looking at COVID-19 vaccine effectiveness. And we also have another project, which is a project ECHO, which is also a community of practice that look at areas that we can use to build capacities of health professionals. We have our partners. Stanford as we are having them on board today. AfriHealth, within its existence from 2016 to date, have been able to make some uh, achievements. And uh, just to mention a few, uh, we've been able to conduct uh, some research on COVID-19, which has really impacted on some decisions on the continent and also uh, globally. Through our HIV and COVID training with the Stripe HIV work, we've been able to, together with the University of California, San Francisco, trained almost 14,000 health professionals uh, in pre-service and in-service education. We've been able to do that. We also have a learning management system, and uh, Roger will take you through that. And we are also using it to train people, and we have programs on it. And currently, uh, we are running a program called uh, Stripe Africa, which is also about HIV and COVID training to build capacities and quality HIV care. AfriHealth also does leadership training, uh, and then also we build capacities in scientific writing, grants writing and then um, early career scientists, pairing them up with experienced scientists for them to also mentor them. Our membership categories are uh, regular, which is individuals and then institutions within Africa. We also have international membership. We have student membership and then we have affiliates. The benefits that one can derive from being a member of AfriHealth is that you can grow professionally because we have experts, we have people with vast experience who can mentor you, and then you can also collaborate with them in other areas, and that can really help you to grow professionally and in any other areas that uh, you need to grow. And you can also be somebody who can also grow other people. AfriHealth offers that opportunity. We have collaborations where you can work with other people across other continents, the other continents and also on the continent uh, as well. For institution members, uh, you can also connect with others and then you can also uh, grow your staff and then uh, your students. For my IPE student exchange, that's interprofessional student exchange, is a way of growing students uh, within our member institutions and then our programs like the leadership development program the Project ECHO also seeks to grow the capacities of faculties in our member institutions. We pay subscription to be able to keep the organization going, so individuals pay $25. Institution members also pay $500. If your institution is a member, you as an individual wouldn't pay the institution's payment covers uh, you. And then students are free, they don't pay any subscription. As an organization, uh, we continue to look for members to expand because if we are many, we can make greater impact on the continent. And so we're looking for more people to be part of AfriHealth to benefit and also be a benefit to the continent and also for strategic partners so that we can all work together to achieve our goals. So thank you very much uh, for the time. And uh, you can visit our website on www.afrihealth.org and learn more about AfriHealth and the work that we are also doing. And we are advancing interprofessional excellence in health professions, education, research, 
uh, service for Africa. So we say that don't only participate in uh, this training, but join us so that together we can achieve more. Thank you very much. Over to you, Roger. Thank you very much, uh, Madam George Nayabwa. Um, that is the Afri Health Executive Director. Um, so now next is the overview of the course uh, COVID-19 for healthcare workers. And we are fortunate enough to have our partner here from Stanford Center for Health Education with the name of Ati Powell. And she will be here to give us an overview, give, uh, give us a brief information about Stanford Center for Health Education and also why the COVID-19 training. So over to you, Ati, and thank you for showing up to take over this. Great, thank you, Roger. Um, thank you for that introduction. Again, I'm Arthi Porwell. I'm the Managing Director of the Center for Health Education at Stanford that partnered with AfriHealth on this course. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the course, but first I wanna tell you a little bit about our, our center. Um, let me just put this in the right view mode. There we go. Um, so a little bit about our Center for Health Education and, and what we do. Um, overall, our goal is to expand knowledge and we believe through that improve health. Um, so we do that in a few different ways as a center. Um, the first is that we have a lot of certificate programs. Most of them happen to be online and digital just to expand the reach in the areas of health and wellness, managing and leading, and then kind of the future of health and data science. and. The idea there is to try to um, get ahead of the knowledge that providers that are already practicing may need in the future and where um, healthcare is going. Uh, we do a lot of collaborations with academic organizations globally um, and organizations like AfroHealth that you, you're hearing about today, uh, where, where overall goal is to, to increase overall capacity for the health workforce. So training can happen at all levels. Um, whether that be the primary care provider, nurses, community health workers, et cetera, depending on the need. Um, we've got some relationships in Africa as well. And, and actually part of our team is based out of um, Cape Town, South Africa, because of a lot of the programs that we run locally. Um, we have an initiative that we call the Digital Medic Initiative. Um, and, and that's really a social impact initiative. And our goal with that is to create open access, free, health education resources for community health workers and the communities they serve. So we focus a lot on maternal and child health. During COVID, we pivoted to COVID and we created a number of materials for the community health worker level. Uh, we also created this course, which is at the health provider level because we saw the, the biggest gap and that this one was kind of a blend between what our center does and our digital medic social impact initiative does. Um, that's a, a little bit about the center. Uh, to give you a sense, I mentioned those courses are a lot in health and wellness, managing and leading, and the future of, of, of health. Um, these are the types of courses that we have available through the center. Um, a lot of them I, I mentioned are online. Some are totally asynchronous where you can take them on your own time, and some are cohort-based. So you're a part, you sign up for specific dates, you're able to interact with the learners and have a tutor and facilitator guiding you through the course. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you today about the COVID-19 training for health workers course. Um, so Digital Medic, I mentioned that's our open access health education initiative where, where everything that we, we create is, is openly licensed. Um, and this is really because of our vision. We, we believe that all communities should have access to engaging, actionable, and evidence-based health information. We believe that that's a human right. And so we work with organizations and nonprofits um, throughout the world to create these health education resources, whether it's collect a course. So for example, this caring for sick children in the community, that's a course that we're about to launch in the fall um, that just kind of goes through the most common childhood illnesses and helps community health workers understand um, how to recognize it, how to diagnose it and what to do um, afterwards. And then um, we also have a number of standalone videos and health education resources that the community members can view themselves. They can be shared on WhatsApp or they can be viewed in various platforms. So we partner with lots of organizations like AfroHealth to try to get some of this content out. 
um, to a much broader group. So the, the COVID-19 training for healthcare workers, um, we started working on in 2020 when the pandemic really kind of hit and we saw a need to quickly educate um, providers that were really trying to, to help understand the virus. Um, this course was created with the Stanford Emergency Medicine faculty. So I wanna make sure to recognize um, Dr. Mahadavan and Dr. Stralo who you see here that are really the course directors for this whole course and through their team dedicated a lot of time to um, helping create these resources. And then they still kind of, you know, help answer questions for the students. Um, we have a trailer video here. Um, I don't just with time, I'm not sure I'm gonna share that, but I, I we can make this available after, which if you're really trying to understand is this course uh, right for you. What does it look like? We've got some snippets of the course in there, and it and it gives you a, a good overview of um, what the course will cover. Oops, I'm not going to go through that. Um, so, what does the course cover? Um, so, well, first, uh, you know, since we launched in 2020, we've grown the course into multiple languages, and through Afro Health, I think they're they're also. Um, providing the course in the future in uh, French and Portuguese. Right now it's in English. Um, but the course covers these modules you can see listed here, really going through COVID-19, what, what is it, how do you protect yourself, the vaccines, um, how do you assess patients, uh, diagnose, and then treat. And we kind of get into various levels of treatment, early, advanced, and then really advanced. Um, each module has several lessons. So you'll go into the module, um, you can see here kind of the anticipated time that we think they'll take. We really tried to get this course to be under five hours because we knew that um, time is really, really tough for all of you that um, have, have such busy schedules and patients to care for. But each module you know, starts with a pretest, and part of this is important for us just to understand if we're having an impact at all. So the pretest is not something that's you know, graded, it's really just trying to understand through this lesson, do we teach somebody something? So that's really just information for us to kind of to improve the course in the future. But there's a pretest to kind of test your knowledge even going into that mod, that lesson. You'll learn the lesson really through these great videos that also have the, you can get the downloaded um, slides if you prefer to kind of learn um, uh, on your own. There's some readings and then there's a post test at the end of each lesson. Uh, for the full course, uh, there is a, an assessment, uh, both again, the pretest uh, very early, all the modules we try to go through. And then there's a learner survey too, just to kind of learn about, you know, how is this course impacting you and what, what do you like to learn? And then at the end, you repeat the final final assessment, which is really um, trying to be comprehensive in terms of all the modules. Um, since the course launch, we added a few a few other modules that we were seeing are really important. So one was uh, pediatrics, and then another was telehealth. Um, that we we saw a lot of um, organizations adapting to trying to do a lot of this remotely, and we wanted to to both. Um, help train on what is telehealth and how can you use it, but also how can you use it in the context of COVID-19. So those modules are available as well. Um, so, you know, since this course has been out for a few years and we've had a, a lot of learners take it um, through the other platforms we offer it in, one of the things that we've learned uh, from the learners is that they really value the, the course and in particular, um, how to handle COVID-19, but also skills that are beyond COVID-19. So one of the things we talk about is, okay, so we're a few years into the pandemic, do people really need this type of content anymore? And we're finding that they do. And, and sometimes they might skip over the, you know, early signs of COVID-19. Many people have that down yet, but you, you know, the, the faculty really kind of teach on just overall clinical assessment, right? And how, how to think about that. Um, and we found that the skills that people are learning really are feel transferable. So even though the pandemic has evolved, um, those skills that that the course is teaching um, the learners on can really be applicable today. Um, so what's next for us? Um, we have this course here, but we're we're really trying to. Um, we, we want to do more of this. We want to partner with Afro Health going forward. We want to be able to share the learnings really quickly with um, learners like yourselves, um, especially making sure that we're getting high quality information, that it's evidence based and be able to, to have these routes to share it really quickly with the global health workforce. 
Um, right now, our team is really kind of refocusing some of our attention um, in terms of topics on routine immunization, which we've really seen drop off, um, partly due to the pandemic with the, the fear of kind of going in for, for anything, for any type of immunization and um, trying to focus on what are those sources of hesitancy and how can we get those rates kind of back up in the pediatric and family community. Um, so those are my slides. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions. You know, at the end, I'll stay on, but just wanted to share a little bit about the course and, and how we designed it in our Center for Health Education. Thank you for inviting me to do this. Thank you so much, Artsy. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much. I think I will make time for questions after I take us through the how you enroll on the onto the course through our AfriHealth Learn Management System. So let me share my screen and then I'll indicate how you can log onto our LMS and as well as enroll onto the system. All right, so in order to have access to the course that is COVID-19 for healthcare workers, we have the course prepared or developed onto our learning management system. And before you access the learning management system, you will need to visit our learning site, which is learn.afrihealth.org. I will encourage that we, uh, we write this down because this is the platform we will use throughout the entire course. So you can note it down somewhere as you use this particular URL throughout the entire course period, which is learn.afrihealth.org. So I'm going to take the screen off and go into the browser and demonstrate how you can register using the learn.afrihealth.org. Let me take, let me first take us through the guide. Um, we are currently having a bit of a downtime on our internet here. The network is not too strong. So let me use this uh, PDF document to demonstrate how you can get and enroll onto the site. So with any computer browser or even with your phone um, internet, any phone or any digital platform, once it's connected to the internet, and you type in the URL, which is learn.afrihealth.org. You are expected to land onto a screen like this, an interface like this. If you enter the URL, learn.afrihealth.org, and you do not see this interface, you may have to recheck the address again so you see this interface. On the interface, you will see the login page, a login as guest, as well as a create new account. As a new user, you'll be expected to go into the create new account, to click on the create new account, and then fill in a few registration details in order to get an account onto the system. So once you click on the create new account, you'll be required to enter in a username and a password, and as well as some few other details, which I will demonstrate at once. I get a response from my colleague that the internet is, or the system is back online. A username can be a short form of your email that you can easily recall on your next login. And the password is supposed to be set with a strong combination. And uh, that is, uh, if you read the description there, it says 
the password must have at least eight characters, at least one digit, at least one lowercase letter, at least one uppercase letter, and at least one non-alphanumeric character. If we do not have a combination of these, the password will not be seen as strong and will not be set. So it is important to take note of the notes here on setting up the password and you set it. Another important part of the registration is enrollment key. Every course on our LMS has an enrollment key. An enrollment key help a user or a learner to automatically get enrolled onto the course that he or she is enrolling for. So with the COVID-19 for healthcare workers, we have two main courses currently running. We have an English course and we have a French course currently active. The Portuguese course will be active pretty soon and then we will add it to the list. Let me go to the browser currently because I, I understand that the system is back on. So allow me to move to the browser. All right. So as I was saying, as a first time user, you'll be required to click on create new accounts. Once you click on create new accounts, like I was saying earlier, you'll be required to set in your username, a password, and then put in the enrollment key. So let me just create in my account for my username. And then I'll set my password. So taking into consideration the the, the notes given for the password um, setting. And again, the enrollment key, as I was saying, these are keys that automatically helps a user to enroll on the course. So we have enrollment key for both the English course and also for the French course. So for I'm going to enter in the enrollment key for the English course, and then I also demonstrate the enrollment key for the French course. But before I proceed, I would like us to have a view of the enrollment key since all of us will be using it. As you can see, the enrollment key for the English course is S in caps lock, S, C, A, COVID, two, three, and E, signifying for English. And for the French course, for those who um, speak French or want to take on the French course, you can use the enrollment key STA COVID 23F. Please note that the enrollment, if you use the enrollment key for the English course, you will see you will land on the English course or you'll be enrolled on the English course. And if you use the enrollment key for the French course, you'll be automatically be enrolled onto the French course. So please take notes of the language that you prefer to enroll on and kindly copy it or write it down. My colleague will put it in the chat box as I continue to demonstrate. So that when you are registering, you can use the enrollment key to complete your enrollment. Okay. So as I was saying, I'm going to copy in my enrollment key and put it into course. I, I am enrolling onto the English course. So I'll then put in my email address as well. And then you can proceed with other information. Please take note that the asterisks you see beside the, the features or the, or the columns shows that they are mandatory fills that you need to fill in order for you to complete the form and increase the accounts. So I'm just going to fold this quickly so you see how I take it through the course itself. 
You can also select a country from the country list. I am from Ghana. And then put in your profession. What I am doing is uh, for testing purposes. Uh, so if you have a profession, if you are into medicine, you can put in medicine. If nursing, you can put in nursing, or you, you put in your profession in the column there, as well as your institution. We have a tall list of institution here. If you do not find your institution here, you can select order and then proceed with it. The training level, you can select whether it's post-service or pre-service, where you belong to, and then you select. And then you choose a degree that you have, if diploma, bachelor's, PhD, and then you can put in your mobile number where need be. So once you're done, you check and to see that the enrollment code is correct. If the enrollment key is not correct, it will not create the account. So once I check and I notice the enrollment key is, is correct, I'll then proceed and create my new account. Do we have Raja with us? Because I think we're having connectivity issues. Raja, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. I've been trying to. So there's also um, trying to get to the landing page. So I demonstrate from there. Okay, looks like I have a bit of a connectivity issue. So let me demonstrate how I have the course open already um, for my offline browser. I'm just going to demonstrate that one quickly so the connection doesn't waste uh, much of us. Great. So once you click on create accounts, our internet connection um, is not too strong. So I have this uh, saved already so i can take you through just in case the connection is not too good so once you click on create accounts you will land onto the course interface or the course dashboard as you can see from here you can see we have um, the participants about this course overview and the course modules on the left side as well as about the course interface in here we also have announcement features where we can put in announcements. And then learners can post in their questions and answers over here, their questions, and they'll be responded to by our resource person on anything that they, they need more clarification on. Please note that this is a self paced learning system. So you do not need any facilitator to come in and engage you. So we, you, everything is built in in modules. We have videos, we have resources, and we have quizzes that learners can follow at their own pace. If you scroll down, we also have the course overview. Now within the course overview, we have a free survey that learners are encouraged to take before they start with each of the, with the modules. I'm trying to see if the internet will respond.
Uh, just a minute, I'm trying to connect back so we can. So we have the core survey here, where learners will be encouraged to complete a course survey. We have descriptions here for you to read. Uh, everything that needs any clarification, you can read the description here. So you begin the course survey before you start attending, attending any of the modules. So let me take you through a quick recap of how the modules uh, look like and what you expected to do and then how um, the post-course survey will also be like before you get your certificate. So once you're done with your, your course survey, you can proceed with the Model 1. The Model 1, you have a brief description about the course and also some activities that you'll be required to complete before you proceed to the next model. For instance, we have the description of the model in here, and then we have a pre-test for the Model 1, which is the COVID-19 key features. We have a pre-test space for it. And then we have a video. Once you complete the pre-test space, uh, you realize that automatically you'll be checked in here. I have logged in as a super admin. That's why you can see it's already checked. But as a new user, once you complete a particular feature, it will automatically check it, itself for you. So that the next time you log in again, you'll be able to know where you've gotten to and then proceed from there. So we have a pre-test space that learners will be encouraged to do. Afterwards, there is a video that you can watch and gain more insights before you proceed to the rest. Now with the video, we also have a video transcript below, as you can see. Because of the connectivity issue, I don't know whether the video will stream, but I just wanted, I want to test it out for us to see how it shows. So there's a video that you can click to have a full screen on. You can also read a transcript below if you do not get something too clear. Um, afterwards, After watching the video, you can get back to some of the resources that we've placed under the modules. Trying to go back to the module one. Unfortunately, our connectivity is not too strong today, so there is a bit of a lag. Pardon me, um, our internet is a bit of a challenge now. I'm trying to reconnect to a different internet. I apologize for the delay. Can you see my screen?
Okay. Um, thank you for being patient with me. Um, looks like the, our internet is back now. So as I was saying, once you are able to watch the video, we have some handouts and some slides that you can also engage on after watching the video. Now, after using these resources, you can now go and proceed with the post-test for the COVID-19 key features. And this basically goes follows through for all of the models. And you can see the next, the next topic, which is PPE and scene safety. It also follows the same procedure. We have the pretest, we have the video that you can click to watch, and also we have the transcript in the video, as well as the handouts and also a slice that you can also engage on or read further to have more clarification. And then you can proceed with a post test for it. This follows for all the modules uh, as well. So it's much easier to follow once you understand the first pattern and proceed with the rest of the modules. Now, once you have completed all the modules, which follows exactly the same pattern or the same style, you can then proceed to the post quiz and certificates. You can now proceed to the post course phase and certificate. Jay or Mukalu, where is Zoku? Esther, where is Kindly mute for us if you are on mute. So before you complete the post course phase, so it's important that you complete all the post test space for all the models. As you can see, it shows that the post course space will only be accessible after you have completed the post test phases for all the other models. And once you are done completing the post test phase, you can then proceed to have a follow up survey and then generates your certificates. And now you can see that the certificates is dependent upon completion of the post course quiz as well. So it follows a very easy step um, as I demonstrated earlier. And then you proceed here, complete a post course quiz, and then proceed to a survey and then generate your certificate. We have um, the post course quizzes have great points to it. So you may have to have a number of uh, a pass mark in order for you to proceed uh, to, in order for you to complete the post test and then proceed to the post course quiz. Once you're done, you can click on certificates and generate your own certificates at your own pace. It's been, it's been a bit of a struggle with our internet, but if there is any question, um, I'll be glad to answer you. So, so Roger, um, one of the about, questions, yeah. one of the questions in the chat is that if people already have an account because they've been doing Stripe, how do they access this module or this course, I should say? All right. So for those who already have an account on the LMS, I will advise that you, if you can send me an email or put your name, send me an email. I'll put my email on the chat box and then. I will move, I will automatically enroll you onto the course without you having to re-register again. And also I will check from the list of uh, participants, those from those who attended today, uh, those whose emails are already existing in the LMS and try and move them. But whilst doing that, if you can send me a quick email, I've placed my email in the chat box and then let me know your, your name or the email address you use in registering the uh, for your LMS account, and I'll enroll you onto the course. Thank you, Raja. 
I do not see any other questions in the chat, but please reach out to Roger. He has put his email there if you have any questions about accessing the LMS or accessing the course. Uh, and I think Arthur and Roger laid out the content and the um, course structure very well. Um, as mentioned, it is a self-paced course, so you can start it and finish it at leisure, but um, do you know choose a time where you do know you can get to it regularly and finish up the course as well. There's a minimum um, min minimum sort of percentage I think you need to get in the post uh, course quiz in order to be able to get a certificate. Am I right, Roger? Yes, you are correct. Right. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions for Roger or Arthi from any of you present. I have a question. Go, Elsie. Yeah, uh, because uh, Roger has said that uh, he will be able to enroll those that are here, but there are so many people that are going to probably do this course who are not here. So they may also experience uh, issues logging on if they are already they have already registered how will that be handled so we're trying to rearrange the landing page lc to sort of rather than it going into the login directly that we tell people that if you have a login go in if you go already using the course and the module and you have access go ahead but if you want access to a new module and we'll list the modules please contact this person Eventually, what's going to happen in the new update is that once you create an account, you can go in and see all the module, all the courses that are present, but you will not be able to enroll. You can request for enrollment. So that's the final plan where eventually um, you can go in and request an enrollment and you'll be emailed a key once your uh, application to enroll for a course is approved. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. So, um, what about medical students, um, both junior and senior medical students, and junior and senior resident medical officers, which uh, which are under training? Uh, can we can they do this course? Absolutely, um, Arthi. I think you'd agree that they can also be able to undertake this course. Yeah, I would agree. They can certainly take it. Um, it wasn't designed for for the medical student audience, so there may be some areas they they have some questions about. But it it can be for anyone, and we've had some um, students take it for sure, some residents, fellows, and they did they did well. So please do have them enroll. I think as a backup, if you're having students or, in, or, or, or advising students to take it, that you do fit in into their timetable a small discussion face to face to sort of say do you have any questions do you need anything for clarity so you deal with that as well as part of the training uh, and i think that would be advisable so they don't feel too lost no any judge. other questions Well, we 5.30 on the dot, so I will just say thank you very much for all of you attending, but most especially thank you to the Stanford team and Arthi for collaborating with us, for providing this course. I appreciate that our president, Elsie, has taken time to be with us, as has our executive director, Georgina. Um, we look forward to working with you and collaborating with you on a whole lot more. Um, and you can also reach out to us as participants to tell us what it is you would like to see on our learning management system as courses um, for skills development, capacity development, leadership development, anything that you might want to see, please feel free to reach out to us. I'll hand over, I know I've put in Elsie on the spot for a final word of thanks from Elsie. Elsie? Thank you very much, uh, Fatima. I'd like to, to, to thank Stanford for this opportunity to collaborate with us and specifically uh, Ati for coming and uh, making the presentation. I would also like to, to thank our executive director for being here and the secretariat. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roger, for the presentation. And I'm sure many questions are going to come 
to you from uh, people that would like to take part in this course. Uh, we are really grateful to Stanford for sharing this course with us. As I said earlier, this is an important course that some of this content can actually be applied in other conditions. Thank you all for being here. And uh, those that are not members of AfriHealth, I would uh, request that you become members because with time, some of these uh, courses will be just, you. if you are not a member, you may not be able to access them. So the earlier you become a member, the more benefits that uh, you'll get. Thank you everybody and have a nice day or evening or afternoon, depending on where you are. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.